Good morning, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And we are coming to you today with our morning meditation from Matthew chapter 14. And uh, Tyler, if you will, go on ahead and read verses 13 through 16 of Matthew 14. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, this is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. All right. Again, as we've said before about the miracles, and this one is a miracle of Jesus, there's not faith on the part of the crowd. This one is a miracle of and, and as we've said before, we're making a difference between people who received from God by faith and God's divine direct action, whether faith was involved or not, in the performance of a miracle. And as you look at this, they have already received a miracle. Um, you say, no, they had to have faith enough to receive their healing. But Jesus generically just had compassion, and whoever wanted to be healed, he healed. And so the day continues on, and we would assume that as he was healing, or after he was done healing, whoever wanted to be healed, um, that he may have done some teaching. And now it's late in the day, and the apostles, the disciples, come to him, and they tell Jesus, hey, it's late in the day. Now, just so we're clear, I'm pretty sure Jesus knew what time of day it was. Pretty sure he's got eyes that were functional and could see. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, but apparently even the disciples, when you know, when someone, it's like when someone comes in and you can see that it's raining, you can hear that it's raining, and you can see the water coming up to the edge of the building. And someone comes in wet with an umbrella covered in water, and they have the brilliance to say, it's raining. So if you're one of those, don't feel bad. The apostles did it too. If you're one of those that you just go, hmm, don't feel bad. Jesus had a bunch of followers like that. But stating the obvious has been around at least 2,000 years of recorded history. Um, and their idea is send everyone away so that they can go get food for themselves. Because of how we teach this event, we have left the church powerless. We have this idea that the only way that the church functions is by people coming together, putting in enough money, making a need known, and everybody putting in enough money uh, to make something happen. And what Jesus tells them is, you give them something to eat. Now, if you're hearing this, and, and maybe you're hearing it for the first time, your question in your mind is probably like theirs. Well, what are we going to give them? We don't even have enough for ourselves. You see, this event wasn't for the crowd. It was for the disciples. Tyler, what's the one word that occurs with super high frequency that you should have taught about this Sunday in the Gospel of Matthew? It's a mm. K word. Mm. I didn't teach on it. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, you were in my class then. I was. 54 verses, Tyler. This K word occurs in the Gospel of Matthew as a contrast between two styles of kingship and rule. Oh, man, I've given you half the word already. King. Kingdom. Kingdom. I was, I was like, this has got to be a trick question. And I was like, yeah. we talked about kingdoms, but we just talked about kings. We talked about kings because if you talk about kings, you're automatically talking about kingdoms. Mm-hmm. 
2 Corinthians 5 7, Tyler. I know you know what it says. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And not by sight. That is a kingdom principle. He's trying to teach the disciples how the kingdom functions. He's trying to get them to move out of that place where they labor always by their own effort to try and meet a need greater than what they can supply. And they move into the place where God supplies, gives them the provision to meet the need. And this, and that's is what he's saying to him is, you give them something to eat. He's going to teach them a lesson about being obedient to what he says and trusting that he will make the provision available when they move into the place of doing the work of the kingdom. Now, some of you are going, oh, what? How's this work, brother? Matthew 6. Go back and read Matthew 6. There's mammon and there's God. And too long in the church we keep trying to do things the way of mammon because we've never learned the lesson from the birds of the air or the lilies of the field. And until we do, this Jesus church Christianity thing is way more difficult unnecessarily than it needs to be. You have some other thoughts on this, my brother? No, sir. All right. With that, we bid you good morning. You say, you haven't even gotten to the multiplication. No. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. I need you to let this one sink in and go read Matthew 6 about how he says the kingdom functions. I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Keller. And we bid you good morning, Lord willing. We'll see you back at 1230.